I am a person who does not believe in coincidence for Allah. There is no coincidence for Allah. For you and I, there might be coincidence. For Allah, it's not considered coincidence. He plans things. Who I interact with, the person I pass, the things that happen, everything is designed by Allah. Everything that ever happens in your life is a challenge from Allah. He wants to see what you do about it. What you do about the situations he puts you in. What you do about the opportunities he has thrown in front of you. My brothers and sisters, when we get money, we think of things we want. But do we think Allah has made it compulsory for you to divorce yourself a little bit from the wealth in terms of limiting your love for it? Why is zakat compulsory? Do you really think that Allah was unable to provide for the poor? He created them for a reason. He wants them to be there so that he can test the others. Allah says in the Quran, we have intentionally kept people on different levels of sustenance so that some can reach out to the others. Do not love your wealth more than you love reaching out to those who don't have because loving your wealth on its own will not be able to attain for you any righteousness. But Allah says, You will never achieve true righteousness until and unless you spend from that which you love. So Allah's created scenarios and situations where he's telling you, I know you've budgeted to do something. It's a luxury. Here there is a desperate need. Are you prepared two pounds, two and a half pounds of every hundred to give it out? I have made it compulsory for you because I love it. When you reach out, it's going to help you. It's going to make you not love wealth to the degree that you do something prohibited to achieve it. The way wealth is marketed today and materialism across the globe, people would do anything to earn, whether it's legal or illegal, becomes besides the point to some people. They don't mind. I made millions. How? Don't ask me. Astaghfirullah. Allah says, wait, the earning must be pure. The spending is pure. But I want to share with you something that makes me cry. Allah will never accept your wealth for a good cause if it was earned in a bad and evil way. So you might be wondering, I'm not going to give to these guys. I'm not going to give to that cause. I'm not going to do this. The causes of goodness will continue without you. Perhaps it's the filth of your heart that has caused you not to want to give because Allah didn't want your wealth to contaminate such a beautiful, pure cause. That's also taken from the Prophet Muhammad When you see a poor person, you actually look at them and you should feel privileged to know someone who is so needy so that you can give. Allahu Akbar. I come from a country where there are a lot of people who beg. Do you know what shaitan does to us? You see a beggar begging. The first thing that crosses a lot of minds, astaghfirullah, partly including mine sometimes, I'm a human being, is, you know what, this is a scam. These guys are part of a big syndicate. Yes, we will not encourage it. But Allah tells you in the Quran, you don't need to give. If you feel like you don't want to, you don't have to. Do not belittle the person. You don't know them. Thank you. That's all we're saying. Did you hear what I said? You don't have to say, hey, put your window down and say, go get a job. Give him a job. Give her a job. What did you just say? You belittle someone. Why are you begging? There's nothing wrong with you. Hang on. If you don't want to give, smile at the guy and walk away without giving a penny. You have a right if your heart is not inclined towards it. So what? But you don't have a right to insult someone. Don't belittle them. They could just be genuine and they could be so close to the Almighty and you don't know. Be careful. May Allah help us. The diseases of the heart, that's where they stem from. Love of this worldly life, selfishness. I want things for myself only. I don't want to share what I have with anyone and everyone. I don't want to, not at all. Subhanallah, you have to share. Everyone wants goodness only for themselves and no one else. But Islam tells you when you share it, you achieve righteousness because your time on earth is very temporary. It's short. How long are you going to be here for? I promise you just a few more days, to be honest. We are going back to Allah. We're happy to be going back to Allah with a little bit of preparation. How do you prepare? Allah sends you the beauty in the Quran and he tells you, we have sent you something that will cleanse your heart. You want to follow? Here's rules. Here's regulations. It's going to be discipline. Yes, but follow it. Try your best. You are a human. We know that you are a human being. We know the challenges. We know the pressures of society. Keep on trying to be a better person every day, every day in whatever Allah makes easy for you.